Hello, and welcome to Recipes with Ben. This is the second part of a five-part series where I'm breaking down my process for creating a homebrew beer recipe from start to finish. So if you missed the previous video, I'll link that one down below, or it'll probably be up here. So make sure you click the bell so you don't miss the next one. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So as I mentioned in the previous video, this step is called standing on the shoulders of giants. And so what that means is, for me, it means taking advantage of past brewing experience, history, and other people have brewed recipes that have been ironed out and tested because they typically brewed them and sold them commercially or, you know, had them for their own consumption. So for me, that means using that to my advantage so I can use that to start to fill in the details of the outline of the beer recipe. So we start with beer, which is, you know, fermented wort that's been turned into alcohol. This has been around for thousands and thousands of years. It's driven humanity to, you know, cultivate and grow crops for the sole purpose of making beer. And the recipe has been handed down from generation to generation. And some of them are, you know, closely held secrets that are, you know, held tight to the vest. Or, you know, some of them are published in, you know, magazines or journals or, you know, homebrew uh, forums online. And some even YouTubers, like, will just publish their entire recipe. And so if you want to see any of my recipes, I'll link them below. But I, because I fully put in all the ingredients that I use. So for us, we're going to start simple and then we're going to move to becoming more complex as we talk about recipe development. So in the previous step, we talked about inspiration. And so if you say the style of beer that you were inspired to make was a Pilsner. Now, Pilsners come from Germany. And so that means that they typically have, you know, German malt and German hops and then some kind of yeast strain that was, you know, popular from that area. So if we do a quick, you know, Google search for a Pilsner recipe found on beerandbrewing.com, they had a recipe that was fully published. It tells you exactly what types of malt they suggest, what type of yeast they suggest, and what type of hops they suggest. And then from there, it talks about the style guidelines for a Pilsner. So it describes a Pilsner as it should be straw in color, high clarity, and the hop character should come from late noble hop additions. On their website, they're published German Pilsner beer recipe. So it has majority of the malt coming from Pilsner malt and then a little bit of touch coming from Victory malt. And finally, Warrior and Heller Tau are the hops that they add to this beer. They describe the final beer as being crisp, you know, a touch of graininess and plenty of IBUs to round out the beer. And lastly, they recommend that because this style of beer typically uses a lager strain, they recommend using the Bohemian lager yeast strain that's commercially available. Now, when we talked about the inspiration, this was our outline for our picture, right? So that was drawing out the rough guidelines of what we're looking for. So we were reaching in for a Pilsner recipe. Now with the this recipe from beerandbrewing.com, what we're looking at is coloring in the color in the inside the lines of that recipe. Now from here, you can make a lot of changes. Either you can brew this recipe as is, or what you can do is say so change the hops a little bit. You know, you can switch from Heller Tau to some other type of hops, such as like Saz, which comes from that same region. Uh, you can change out some of the malt. So maybe you can't get German Pilsner malt. Maybe you want to use some American version of it. Like Bryce has its own commercially available Pilsner malt. You could also replace some of that with a little bit of Vienna malt. Uh, or, you know, you could also look at different types of yeast strains. So... One of the things I would say that would be a really good example of taking this base recipe, keeping the same malt and the same hops and changing out the yeast to be looking at uh, replacing the yeast with a Kvik strain. And there's a commercially available Kvik strain out there that says it ferments like a lager, but because it's Kvik, it typically is at a higher temperature and has a quicker fermentation turnaround. So the one that I'm specifically talking about is from Omega Yeast and their strain is called OYL-071 or the Lustrica Vike strain. As I said before, this gives it a lager characteristic as well as a fast fermentation. And with all that said, you know, we could also look at other recipes out there, but this is something that's kind of basic. So we'll start with just talking about a Pilsner and then we'll get more complex in the next couple videos. And if you want to see full 
recipes that are more complacent that I've made. I'll link those again, like I said. Instead, we've reached the end of step two, which is standing on the shoulders of giants. We're using past experience and history to write a recipe, at least start a recipe. In the next video in this series, we're gonna talk about numbers. So this is where we're gonna talk about the amount of hops we're gonna add, the amount of grain we want, what size batch we want to do, and we'll use some different types of programs to kind of iron that out. I'll show you those in the next video. So if you found any of this helpful in designing your own recipe, give it a big like. You know, if you're new to the channel again, please subscribe because I will continue this series so you won't want to miss the next one. And thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a good one.